I'm in opposition. Mr. Chairman. Gentleman from Texas. Mr. Chairman, I seek to the time in opposition. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I think the first and probably most important point to make on this amendment is that it does not belong on this bill and it imperils the whole bill. This issue about whether to expand GAO's uh, authority the intelligence community has been an issue in the FY 2010 intelligence authorization bill has been the subject of veto threats from the administration and is one of, if not the reason, here four months before the end of the fiscal year, we still do not have an intelligence authorization bill. So it does not belong here. This is the DOD authorization bill. It is being discussed in another forum where it should, the intelligence authorization bill. And if it gets added to the DOD authorization bill, it puts in danger this entire bill because just today the administration sent another email which confirmed the veto threat over this provision. So however members feel about the particular issue one way or another, I would suggest that you ought to be very careful about endangering the whole bill over, over this provision. Second point I'd make is this is not a change to be taken lightly. As, as the, the gentlelady, my colleague on the Intelligence Committee uh, mentioned, the GAO has not had this power, authority, before uh, since the modern intelligence community really has, has, uh, has existed. Co Congress after Congress of both parties, presidents after presidents of both parties have rejected this, I would suggest, for some very good reasons. So this is not a step to be taken lightly. I think the only argument one can make is that the current intelligence committees are incapable of performing their oversight capability, uh, responsibilities, and therefore they have to get this other entity, GAO, in to help them do that. I don't agree with that position. I think the intelligence committees in the House and the Senate are capable of performing their job. Now, I get frustrated. I don't agree with everything that uh, the majority chooses to do, but I believe that the committee is perfectly capable of oversight of the intelligence community as we were tasked to do uh, in the House rules and, and by statute. These committees were created in the 1970s to, create a, to, to fill a very unique role and, and to undermine them by saying they're incapable of performing this, this, their job without bringing GAO and, and investigators and so forth, I think is a mistake. I also believe, Mr. Chairman, that it, this amendment may undermine the role of the DNI at a time that is very sensitive for the role of the DNI. Because if you look at the amendment itself, it says the Comptroller General decides uh, what he needs access to, has control over how these investigations will be conducted. Now, the amendment says that he can have discussions with the DNI, but the decision is with the Comptroller General, further undermining the DNI's control over classified material. I think that's a mistake. Uh, there are other flaws, in my view, in this amendment, but the bottom line is it undermines the bill. It does not belong here and it is a step that, that previous Congresses, previous Presidents have not chosen to take because of the sensitivity of the material and the unique role that the Select Committees on Intelligence play. Therefore, I hope my colleagues on both sides of the aisle will reject this amendment. I urge them to do so, and I yield back the balance of my time. At this time, I'd like to yield a minute to the, my uh, friend gentle and colleague. The gentlelady's time in favor of the amendment has expired. M Mr. Chairman? Is it in order to propound a unanimous re consent request at this point? Well, I haven't heard it yet. Requ any request to extend time must be congruent on both sides. Yes. Yeah, I would make a unanimous re consent request to extend for each side one minute. Without objection, so ordered. We, I would yield one minute to the Speaker of the House. Speaker of the House, recognized for one minute. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I thank the gentleman for yielding and for his leadership on this important bill before us. I commend Congresswoman Eshoo uh, for her attention to this important matter, her leadership in bringing this amendment to the floor. 
Uh, Mr. Speaker, as you all know, protecting the American people is our first responsibility. Their security is what we take an oath uh, to uphold, protect, and defend. Uh, in order to do that, we recognize the importance of intelligence gathering uh, to preventing violence and to protecting the American people, especially in this age when we're fighting terrorism at home and abroad. It, it, the issue before us is if the responsibilities of Congress can be honored with a, without the knowledge that we are entitled to. This is a very important issue. We all recognize, as the gentleman said, the importance of having information be kept secret uh, when it's in our national security interest to do so. But to, be, to overdo that to the expense of having Congress not have the information it needs uh, to, um, to do its job of proper oversight to protect the American people. We cannot, we are preventing harm. And if we're going to prevent harm, we have to have information to do so. And the members of the committee of the uh, uh, Intelligence Committee have a responsibility to hold that information close. This doesn't apply to every piece of information of intelligence that comes to the committee, but it does say that the GAO has proven track record of conducting thorough professional in investigations, that her work has informed the Congress and led to significant changes that have enhanced our government's effectiveness. GAO staff are professionals with, to protect information held by the intelligence community. A vote for this amendment is a vote for enhancing intelligence oversights. It is a vote for Congress. I urge our colleagues to support the SU amendment and yield back the balance of my time. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Lady yields back. The gentleman from California is recognized. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I certainly agree with the distinguished speaker about the importance of our role in national security and the importance of Congress's role in overseeing the intelligence community. I agree that national security is the first job of the federal government. I also agree with both the gentleladies from California that oversight can be improved from, from the Congress. As a matter of fact, I've had legislation which has, been, which has not been allowed to be voted on the floor to make clear the notification requirements in statute about what any administration must uh, notify Congress about, the information it must give us. I'd also have to point out that the 9-11 Commission made a number of very important uh, recommendations on how we can improve oversight in this uh, Congress, unfortunately, that have not been adopted. Now, they adopted a kind of a hybrid panel of the Appropriations Committee, but that was not at all what the 9-11 Commission, the WMD Commission, recommend we do to improve oversight. I think we should focus on making our committees of oversight more effective rather than bringing in this other entity, the General Accounting Office, that has historically never had a role with the intelligence community that the President says he will veto the bill over if we allow to happen. Let's look at ourselves, improve ourselves first before we start bringing in others. I thank the Chair and yield back. The gentleman's time has uh, expired. All time has expired. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from California. Those